Welcome to a review of Hughes and Cues, a color-based party game from The Op, who we have to thank for sending us a copy of this game to check out. Hughes and Cues was designed by Scott Brady and published in 2020 by The Op. This colorful party game plays three to ten players, with games taking about half an hour, depending on how long everyone deliberates on the cues. This party game has an MSRP of $24.99 US. If you've got some AP prone folks, I sense a timer might be required. <laughs> it can be an issue. Now in Hues and Cues, players are trying to guess a specific color on a grid of 480 colors based on a one word and then two word cue. Players get points for how close their guesses are to the target. To get a look at this large, vibrant board and the other components in Hues and Cues, check out our unboxing video on YouTube. So the component quality here is decent, and I would say on par with most mass market party games. It includes a mounted board, 30 pawns, a huge deck of colored cards, each featuring four different colors, and a cardboard frame that's used for scoring. Rules are short, concise, and very clear. Pretty much what you'd expect from the box, no better, no worse. Now that we have an idea of what you get in the box, how about you teach us to play Hues and Cues? So this will be a pretty quick one. Hues and Cues is dead simple to learn and play. Every player takes two pawns in their color and places a third on the score track. Starting player draws a card and picks one of the four colors in their card to be their cue color for the round. They then give a one word clue. The other players then in clockwise order place a pawn on one of the spots on the board that they think best matches the cue given. Once everyone has placed their pawn, the first player then optionally gives a second clue, which can now be one or two words. Then everyone places their second pawn based on this cue and you score. Cue giver passes to the next player and you play until everyone has had two turns giving cues. So give a word, guess, give two words, guess, score. Not rocket science here, folks. And scoring is just as simple. After everyone's placed their pawns, the cue giver places this little cardboard frame around their chosen color. The frame covers a three by three square section of the grid Players all get points based on where their pawns are in relation to this grid, with three points for being in the middle, two points for being along the inside edge, and one point touching the outside edge. The cue giver then gets one point per pawn inside of the frame. At the end of the game, the player with the most points wins. Now that we all know how to play, how would you share some of your thoughts on hues and cues? So I first learned about this game during one of the many online game conventions I checked out during the first year of the COVID-19 pandemic. And after watching one live stream of a game being played, I knew I had to get a copy of this game at some point. This is one of those games where I can't help but wonder what took so long. Like, like how did someone not have this out yet? The basic concept is so simple, straightforward, and elegant that it's hard that it took this long to exist as a formalized game. Like, I just taught you everything you need to know how to play in a matter of moments. The game is just that straightforward. And from the look of the game, for some folks, quite attention getting. I know I wanted to play it just from looking at the board without having any idea how you played. Now, the real question, though, is, is it fun? And based on the games we played, yes, it is. Though I have to say the game isn't as easy and simple as I expected to be. The difficulty the groups I played it with have had is coming up with those cues, the, the clues, what people have to guess. Now, this includes coming up for cues for less common colors, as well as trying to come up with unique cues for the common ones. Like, I honestly haven't played a game of hues and cues yet where someone didn't say sky for some version of blue. And every game we played have had multiple players taking a very long time to come up with their cues. And unless you all work for Pantone or a paint company, you're probably going to struggle some. But then mm. that's part of the fun trying to think of something that is not only that color, but uniquely right. that color. Fire shocks being one of those tricky ones, for instance, that can be different colors in different places. A person I've been thinking about it since we've been playing, especially with some players that had a real difficult time coming up with clues, was I, I almost wish they had simple one word cues listed with each of the colors in the cards, or maybe even just one of the four colors. Now, I do worry this may lead to players just using those cues and not improvising and possibly people memorizing them. Though, I don't know, there's a huge deck. I think that'd be difficult. I just think having something there for inspiration might help people get their minds moving in the right direction. 
I'm not sure I like that solution, but perhaps a clue book where you could reference your color you if you were stuck, but it didn't automatically shape your clues by being right in front of you and kind of staring yeah. in your face. Of course, adding in a clue, a, a hue book of example colors that would probably greatly increase the price of the game. I don't want that. Now, getting back to how I discovered hues and cues, right? I, one of the things that I think is, is important to highlight, especially nowadays, and with the popularity of online gaming growing, popularity and sometimes necessi necessity of online gaming going, is how well this game plays online. Now, I watch multiple streams of people playing this game because it fascinated me. And most of the games I watched, the streamers were not playing at the same table. And I saw two different great ways to accommodate playing online. Now, the one group had the player owning the game hold up the cue card to the camera while everyone else closed their eyes. Everyone close their eyes, just Dave, look. And then, Dave, you got it? Okay, and then you put the card down, right? There's that way, um, which, which worked pretty well. And then another group just ditched the cards. And I thought that was cool, too, because it just let the players pick a color out of their head. So, in a way, I like that better because then you can come up with a cue, like you're like, I want to do something about orcs, and you pick a specific green in your head and then find it on the board, right? And this works due to the fact the board's based on a coordinate system. So it's really easy to say, well, my guess is C13 and put the frame over C62. Yeah. And uh, Hughes and Hughes was even a 2020 Golden Geek Best Zoomable Game nominee. I think that's even a category now. It just shows <laughs> how much gaming has changed in the last couple of years. Now, I do have one minor complaint about the uh, quality of the game. It's in regards to the mounted board. Like, it's nice. It, it folds nice. There's no ripples in it. It's a nice board. But it's very glossy. And glare can be an issue with this game because you're talking about colors. We actually found that under certain lighting, like the pot lights in my game room, compared to, say, the side lamp at my mother-in-law's, where you're sitting and where the glare was would actually affect how the colors look. Like, if the glare was over your color, it seemed to be brighter and lighter than if it wasn't, right? Just kind of makes sense. Um, the, the, it, it is a shiny board. It is almost reflective. And I've got to say, I've been really tempted to hit my copy with a coat of testers dull coat. And I would love to know if anyone out there owns this game and they've done it, did it work? Because I also don't want to ruin my game. So I'm slightly concerned about using it, but I, I would love something to remove that, that hot light glow that ends up on parts of the board while playing. And also, since we haven't said this in a while, pot lights over your gaming table are bad. Yeah, well, it was a pool <laughs> table that was in there when we moved in and we replaced it with a gaming table. So <laughs> maybe the pot lights were great for pool, but I agree with Sean. They are not great, especially when we're trying to do photography or anything like that. All right, overall, despite a few, honestly, very minor quibbles, Hughes and Cues is a great game. I'm not a big fan of party games in general, but I'm always happy to find one that myself and my group find interesting and enjoy. And I don't own a lot of party games, but I'm happy to have Hughes and Clues as part of that small collection. Also, I like games that do something different, and I don't know a lot of games based around color. And I enjoyed exploring that twist on a party game. If you're a party game fan, honestly, you should just be rushing out to pick up Hughes and Cues. This goes for gamers as well as non-gamers, though I doubt there's many non-gamers listening to us. But this is one of those games that's great for gamers and non-gamers alike. It's so easy to approach. It's extremely simple and elegant, and it honestly does something different from most other party games. I think this is a great game to toss into your collection with those other word, trivia, and take that party games. Now, if you're more of a hobby Euro gamer like me, I also suggest you check out Hughes and Cues, just because it may win you over as it has me. You basically already know how to play and should be able to tell if this might be a gay game for your group, but there's just aspects of this game that appealed more than your usual take that game. Now, if you're looking for a detailed colored based game that requires you to know Pantone color codes or CYK values or hexadecimal codes, you're not going to find this here. This is a light party game featuring colors that doesn't go into any more depth than what color red do you think of when I say Macintosh? And that's it for our review of Hughes and Cues. If you've tried this color based party game, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. And also, I invite you to check out our written review over at tabletopbellhop.com.